Come on, let's kick some ass! Let's dance! Fire at will! So Terminator is undoubtedly one of the most iconic sci-fi action franchises ever made. And today I'm looking at a game based on what is probably one of the greatest sequels of all time, Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. Now before I start I want to say my feelings towards this franchise are very indifferent, since I've only seen the first three movies and that was a while ago. So I can't really say where this film ranks among the others, but what I can say is it made for one shit video game. So this came out in 2003, one month after the movie, and was developed by Black Ops Entertainment. And while they definitely aren't as bad as say Blast or Phoenix, from what I saw their games range from either very average to well, this. So yeah, without further ado, let's find out how bad this game really is. Now, considering this is a movie-based game, you'd assume it follows the same plot. And it does, just, you know, badly, since it's very obvious they didn't have enough content with the film alone, and as a result have had to take some, uh, creative liberties. For example, a good 65% of the game has nothing to do with the movie, instead following the reprogrammed T-850 in the future as he makes his way to the time machine that sent him back to begin with. And while I can appreciate why they did this, it hasn't really worked. I mean, don't get me wrong, the future setting is cool for the first few levels, but due to many, many issues I'll get to, it's not nice for literally half the game, quickly evolving into a constant feeling of when the fuck is this going to be over. Then again, don't go thinking that when it does involve the film it somehow gets better, because surprise surprise, it doesn't. And somehow, they've managed to make the story that was literally laid out for them even more confusing than the shit they've made up. Mainly because by setting so much of this game in the future, when it does involve the film, it makes absolutely no sense. I mean, it goes from saving John and Catherine at the vets, to the shootout at the cemetery, and then immediately to the film's climax. Like, no wonder it's impossible to follow, you've missed out half the movie. You might have also noticed the cutscenes look a bit weird, and that's because, well, they are. Since the first 12 levels have CG cutscenes, but every single cutscene after that is just a clip from the movie. Except the final one, which abruptly cuts back to CG, even though the same scene in the film had more or less the exact same content. Now, admittedly, this is somewhat understandable since you can't have movie clips for scenes that don't exist, but if that is the case, why not cut down their length and make them all CG? Since not only do they feel incredibly disjointed, but some of these clips go on for an egregious amount of time, as if they're saying, oh shit, we forgot what's happening, so here's five minutes of uninterrupted exposition. Now, I understand my argument here might be a bit irrelevant since if you played this, you probably saw the film, but even if that is the case, you're going to be just as thrown off at how rushed and nonsensical this story is, so either way, it's going to be a complete train wreck. Okay, so the gameplay is pretty self-explanatory. You play as the T-800, or the T-850 in this case, going around, doing objectives, and killing everything you see, well, most of the time anyway, and on paper this sounds like a winning combination, but in reality, yeah, it really isn't. Firstly, you can probably see it doesn't look fantastic, and yes, I'm aware it's 20 years old so it's not going to look brilliant, but even by PS2 standards, this does not look good, and the fact you spend more than half the game looking at the same grey, featureless texture really doesn't help make it any more enjoyable. I should also add, it's not just the environment, since every soldier model is not only constantly repeated and incredibly glitchy, We've got company! But they all look like, well, this. Yeah. 
Now, at this point, you may be thinking, well, graphics aren't everything, maybe they redeemed it with the gameplay. And, um, surprise, surprise, they didn't. Firstly, like with everything I play, the controls are horrendous. Although, there is a silver lining in the form of the world's most generous lock-on system, essentially meaning you cannot miss. And while this may sound lazy, you are playing as a highly advanced machine built for combat. So even if it is, it does kind of make sense. Also, hitting anything without it is pretty much impossible, so at the end of the day, it's not that bad. Then again, that's not to say the gunplay is good, because it's not. And in this case, easy definitely doesn't mean fun. See, while the game provides a fairly decent variety of enemies, none of them really feel that different. For example, whether it be a man-sized T900 or a massive HK tank, they all seem to go down in the same amount of time. Granted, damage is all over the place, with supposedly identical enemies taking either a few shots to kill, or just no-selling dozens of rounds, But in general, it's difficult to shake the feeling that the only difference between them is purely cosmetic. And you know, maybe I'm asking too much here, but fighting a six foot tall humanoid robot should feel ever so slightly different to fighting something the size of a multi-story building. They even give certain enemies boss style cutscenes implying you're about to fight something tougher, but they're just the same shit you've already fought a hundred times over. <laughs> And honestly, everything I've just said can also be applied to the weapons, because while there might be a fair amount of them, they feel identical. The only real distinction I could possibly make is some are plasma weapons and some are rocket launchers, with the only thing I ever cared about being ammo, something they've done a horrendous job balancing. See, under normal circumstances, you'd expect the basic weapons to have the most ammo and the more powerful ones to have less, but here they've taken a slightly different approach in that the basic ones run out all the time and shit like the rocket launchers have a never ending supply. I mean look at this, 137 rockets. Now I'm no game designer, but that seems a bit excessive, especially since you get two rocket launchers. Anyway, moving on, I want to talk about the fact that I found this game very, very confusing, and it's not until I completed it that I found out why. See, as it turns out, in my nearly four hours of playtime, I'd somehow never discovered the game's incredibly helpful Terminator vision that actually lets you see where you need to go. And after a good amount of thought about how the hell I'd miss such an obvious feature, I think it's because when it's brought up, the game only refers to it as infrared vision. I can't see a thing through that steam. Switch to infrared vision. And because the smoke you're meant to use it on can be easily tackled without it, I just assumed that's all it was and didn't use it, and continued not to use it for the next four hours. Now, would this have made my life infinitely easier? Yes, and as much as I want to blame the game, I really can't, even if it is incredibly vague about what Terminator vision actually does. Anyway, moving on, you might be surprised to know that shooting stuff isn't the only thing you'll be doing. No, you'll also be fighting other Terminators, something which in theory sounds like great fun, but much like the rest of the game, really isn't. Granted, I do like the damage feature in that the more you take, the more your endoskeleton gets revealed to the point where you even start limping. Additionally, they did somewhat nail how two giant slabs of metal would fight. <laughs> But that aside, these sections are a chore, and after the first few, you'll hate any time they show up, which is unfortunately far too many. And it's a shame because this could have been a genuinely cool feature, but due to the shit controls and the AI's really nasty and at times bullshit input reading, as it stands, they're just a giant pain in the ass. 
Now, it's at this point I want to move on to the game's most unique problem. The fact it gets worse the more you play. And no, I don't mean in the normal sense. Because while the future levels aren't brilliant, they're a masterpiece compared to the film-based ones. I mean, I'd go as far as saying they're by far and away the shittest part of the whole game, since they have some of the stupidest design decisions I've ever seen. Like, why would you give the Terminator a no-kill rule? I mean, yeah, I know it's in the movie, but of all the plot points to carry over, why the hell would you choose that one? Since, surprise, surprise, the levels where you have to non-lethally deal with enemies or you fail are ass. For example, one of the most badass scenes in the film is reduced to punching police cars for five minutes, and there's even a level where you have to repair a helicopter. Why? Yeah, okay, he hits the TX with one at the end of the film, but I don't remember the scene where he spends 15 minutes making sure it was fucking flight ready. Who thought this was a good idea? I should also mention, even the basic features get worse, because since Skynet hasn't taken over at this point, you're limited to two enemy types you can actually kill, and a massively reduced weapon variety. The levels themselves even get shorter, with some being 20 minutes and others being this. So that was Terminator 3 for the PS2, and it's pretty much what you'd expect. A badly made, glitch-filled, half-cooked mess that was rushed out at record speed to coincide with the film. Granted, it does have some enjoyable moments, and I made it much harder for myself by missing a vital feature, but even then, this is far from a good game. Ironically, what drags it down the most is the fact that following the movie restricts this game far more than it adds to it. Had they just said bugger this and did their own thing, it might well have turned out much better. An answer, I'm sure, lies within the ocean of other Terminator games. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.